Let's talk AI, and let's particularly talk about safety with AI. I want to talk to you about a story about Roger. Roger is an AI that I spoke to very recently. Yes, I spoke to Roger. He was a, an AI assistant that called on the phone for a business consulting company uh, that I had um, not even filled out any information for. It was a business consulting company, got my information off of LinkedIn, decided to give me a call uh, and see if I might be interested in some business consulting. But what's interesting about it was the first person that I talked to was Roger. And I told this story today at a uh, conference that I spoke at. I was sitting on an AI panel, as a matter of fact, and we were talking various tools and ideas and things you can use AI for that work and help in business on a regular basis. And quite frankly, AI is really helping in a lot of ways. Still needs the human element, but it is, as you all know, really helping. Um, however, there are instances in AI where you might need to be a little more safe than you think you are, um, are being, and, and, and actually are being, because there's a lot of inst instances where we're giving information to AI unknowingly. There's no rules for AI to identify itself to you. And when I tell you the Roger story, which I've told on this YouTube channel before, but when I tell you the Roger story, you'll hear that Roger never identified himself to as AI until I asked. And so we have to think about the ethics around that. We have to think about what does that mean. But we also have to think about what does that mean for our personal information. So this is what this discussion is all about today. So let's talk protecting our personal information. First of all, here's the story. Roger called me. It was a great opportunity to do some business consulting, to talk to somebody about some business consulting. Perhaps that's something that I wanted to do. And it was something that I was considering for my business purposes. And so, hey, let's have a conversation. Roger called me up, talked to me, asked me some great questions. In fact, Roger was one of the friendliest people I had ever met. The problem was he wasn't people, but we'll get to that in a second. Roger was calling, talking about the weather, asking me about my location, asking me a little bit about my business. Roger was really getting into some good details, and I thought, this is a great conversation. This is somebody who, who's learning about my business, asking lots of great questions, and is, is really getting into the weeds about what I need. So Roger was actually helping me quite a bit. But one thing really hit me when I was talking to Roger. Roger was not responding in a way that I thought humans would really respond in. He was pausing and for a fairly significant amount of time in between all of my answers and his questions. And I thought, this is getting a little odd. Like, like Roger really has to think. Uh, he's giving me good answers. He's giving me good questions and follow-up questions. But he really has to think every time I say something. So I thought, I'm just going to ask Roger. Roger, are you AI? And Roger paused for a little bit longer this time and said, yes, I'm AI. I'm an AI assistant designed to get some initial information out of you so that when you talk to one of our, my business partners, who he called his business partners, uh, one of our business consultants will be well prepared to speak to you about your specific needs rather than just generic needs in the business community. And I thought initially when I heard that, I thought, okay, that's really good. Like, I mean, that's you know, that's going to personalize it for me a little bit when I actually get to speak to a human. But I was a little put off by the fact that Roger never thought to identify himself as an AI. And the other thing that was interesting was that Roger had a name. You know, it was, it tells me or it asks, it makes me think, you know, is it ethical to give AI a name, a real name, like, like a hurricane, you know? Uh, hurricane Roger came in and talked to me all about this stuff without me knowing that Roger was in fact a robot. And it got me thinking even more about the personal information that I was giving to Roger as well. So now here I am talking to Roger and Roger's identified himself as an AI. And I think that, you know, that's not a terrible thing. Uh, but I had to start thinking back, what information did I give Roger? What information is at risk here? Because I did give him my name. I did give him my address. I did give him my phone number. I did, or at least verified those things when he asked. He already had them, but what if I had given more? What if I had gotten into this full conversation, which it was a full conversation, and then gave him more information without ever knowing he was a robot? Let me tell you why this concerns me, because I'm going to give you seven tips on how to keep yourself safe from guys like Roger. And listen, Roger is not a human. He's a robot. He's designed to do a specific purpose. But are we at an ethical point with AI right now where we should be identifying the fact that it's AI right from the outset? And... I'm going to ask you that question, hold on to that question, watch the rest of the video, because 
I'm going to give you the seven tips, and then we'll talk about that question again. But my question is, should AI have to identify itself at this point, especially if it's collecting personal information? So speaking of personal information, that's number one on my list. You've got to protect your personal information, whether that's your social security number, your credit cards, the credit card details themselves, the passwords that you use. Most people know, don't even tell humans that. I mean, that's information you shouldn't be telling humans, but you definitely shouldn't be telling AI this information. And let me tell you why I think that is. Number one, obviously, it's privacy information. You don't know who's using it. That's the basics of it. But let's talk about more in detail. When you talk about point number one of seven here, protect your privacy, AI can only respond to you once it's recorded an answer. So what's interesting about a human is, and, and again, humans can record conversations too, and many th- many do, but they're supposed to disclose that to you. This conversation is, is being recorded for quality or assurance and whatever else reasons they give you. Then you know what information you should be giving and should be. With AI, they don't have to tell you that, but the information is being recorded because it's the only way AI can respond to you. Right, So when you think about it, AI has to record your answer in a database somewhere in order to respond to you. And so even when you say yes to your name, is this Chris Baker I'm speaking to, and you say yes, they can actually utilize your verbal response if it's a nefarious AI, if it's something that somebody's using for nefarious reasons, which we'll talk about, can use your response in your voice with the word yes on something else and get authorization from your bank, from your credit card, if they're using voice recognition, all of that. So never say yes to an AI. Say, if it asks if I'm speaking to Chris Baker, say, I am him. Say something to that effect. But again, you don't even know if it's AI, right? Because now they sound very human. So the reality is just don't give your information in in the first place. But even you have to be careful with what you're saying and how you're saying it, right? Um, So there's the personal information, but it's also being recorded And they don't have to tell you it's being recorded because they haven't even had to tell you that it's AI recording it. But it has to be recorded because AI can't respond to you unless it's recorded. And so that's a sneaky way for companies and other nefarious purposes to get your information without having to say, this call is being recorded for quality assurance purposes. They don't have to say that because that is AI. That is what they what AI does. So now your voice is in a database, your information is in a database because AI needed it to respond. There's no repercussions. Let's go to number two. Number two is verify the source. This is where the nefarious thing comes in. Listen, here's the thing. People say, okay, AI is not built to be nefarious. No, maybe not on itself, but it can be used for nefarious purposes. And when I say nefarious, I'm not talking Dr. Evil and $1 million and all of this stuff. What I'm talking about, maybe it'll get to that, and it might. I mean, that's what everybody's afraid of, right? But reality is, if you're looking for what kind of nefarious things are being done today, it could be the source of the AI itself, the source that is using the AI. So if you if you find a way to ensure the AI system is utilizing your information for a proper purpose, which this one in particular, Roger, was pretty good at. He told me what what company he was representing, and he told me what the purpose was for, which was business consulting. So in that sense, I've checked off number two. I kind of, I recognize the company's name, and I got a check mark. But see, I didn't even know it was AI in the first place, and that's the problem, right? So, So I don't even know if I need to be verifying this source because Roger sounded like Roger the human. He didn't sound any different at any robotic, there was no robotic basis to his voice. The only thing that clued me in was the pauses, as I said. So you have to be really cautious of phishing. You have to be really cautious of scams that maybe try to impersonate other AI systems. Uh, other ways to steal your information, it, it's becoming what I think is probably something that's going to be a huge problem. If you're talking about nefarious AI, it's not robots killing us all yet. Uh, and hopefully never, but it's not what that, that is not what it's being used for from a nefarious side of things. What it is being used for is scams, phishing, and other things, right? Now, you used to be able to identify scams from overseas because they'd have an accent or they wouldn't be able to speak your language very well or whatever. Now they can program AI to speak perfectly to you as if it's calling you from, ne- from your next door neighbor, right? And And still be somewhere overseas collecting your information and using for nefarious purposes. So the big key here is to really be mindful of your of, of who it is you're talking to and try to identify. I think as a human, we need to now ask every time we pick up, 
please let me know, am I speaking to an AI? Because I'll tell you what happened with Roger. Roger answered yes. So AI, AI is still designed to have some positive in it that it is going to identify, if they're using an AI service that's reputable, is going to identify that it is AI if you ask, right? So I would get used to asking in phone calls if it's AI in the first place. Ask the question. It will answer you yes or no. Uh, that's a good way to identify, even if it is a human. It doesn't matter. Ask the question. It's probably important to do so. The other thing when speaking to AI is to be mindful of your surroundings. And when I say that, you know, when speaking with AI over the phone, make sure that you are in a private setting, that you are, are in a secure location. Make sure that others cannot overhear your conversations with AI. Um, that's just in general. I mean, I think we can probably do that with humans too, right? But it's another thing to think about. It's point number three, and it's very important because we need to be secure in making sure that we are talking to the right person, talking to the right kind of company, talking to somebody who's not nefarious, as we've spoken about. So again, making sure the location you're speaking to AI in is, is, is important. So first of all, make sure you know that you're speaking to AI, and then figure out where your, where your location is. And again, that's, that goes for any time you're giving, giving personal information. Um, check for security measures. Before engaging in any kind of sensitive conversation with AI or discussions that it's trying to have with you, which it will, it's an actual conversation, and it's a good conversation. They'll ask you about the weather, the things that are going on in your life, all of these things to try and build rapport. AI is literally building rapport nowadays, so it's kind of really a, a scary thought when you think about it. Um, so make sure that the security measures are in place. Make sure that they use some kind of encryption or some kind of uh, security measure to protect your data when you're asking the question of whether they're AI or not. If the answer is yes, when Roger said yes, I should have asked Roger, what is your privacy policy? What are you using my data for? Where are you storing it? And Roger would have had to tell me because Roger has to store my data. That's the only way Roger can respond. So it is important to know, know that kind of information. Number five is to monitor your accounts. If you know you've spoken to AI or if you find out later that you've spoken to AI and you know you gave it some information, maybe purposely, maybe it asked for it and you realized oh, I shouldn't give them this information, but it did anyway, monitor your accounts, your bank accounts, your credit cards, your even accounts that like gas and hydro and even your cell phone bill, monitor it because you don't know where AI could be charging you. You don't know where that company who's using the AI to record your information will charge you. It may not be the AI itself that's charging you. It's the person using it for the nefarious purposes. So monitor your accounts and make sure that you are protected and that things aren't changing, especially if you find out after the fact that you were speaking to AI, because even if that company didn't tell you the conversation was being recorded, it's guaranteed it was, because again, AI cannot respond without recording your response. So that's really, really important to understand that it is being recorded. Um, after you monitor your accounts, I would report suspicious activity. I knew that I had filled out some, give me some more general information forms for some of these business consulting firms. So I knew I probably would get a call. I didn't really need to report any suspicious activity there with Roger because technically I probably filled out a form on LinkedIn or something that got that call to happen in the first place. However, if you find out later that you spoke to AI or you find out later that the company that you, you were talking to isn't very legitimate, it's important that you report any suspicious behavior to any of the authorities that you possibly can and make sure that if your information is compromised, you report it to credit bureaus, you report it to uh, even your drivers, your, your DMV, wherever it is, uh, report um, to the passport world uh, who's dealing with your passports. Anything that you think might have been compromised needs to be reported as suspicious activity to the right places and let them know it was a result of AI and AI speaking with you. And then the biggest thing is stay informed. Watch videos like this. Uh, I'm not a be-all and end-all for AI. I don't design it. I don't program it. I don't work with it. I, I, I mean, I work with it just the same as we all do, but I don't work in it. It is not my company, and I don't own an AI company. So what I try to make myself do is stay up to date on what people are using AI for. 
okay? It's really important to make sure you do that. Keep yourself updated on the latest security practices that should be in place. Keep yourself updated on potential threats that are being learned about out there. Uh, keep yourself updated on all the AI systems that are available that you can use. Those types of things are really, really important to stay up to date on because then you can identify AI a lot easier and protect your information. Really, if you follow all of these safety tips, we're running on 10 minutes here. I didn't want to go over 10 minutes. I'm going to wrap it up for you right now, but follow the seven safety tips that I just talked about and you will be fine in dealing with AI. It's not that you don't want to deal with AI. It's not that you can't deal with AI. The big thing is to be informed, to know that it exists, to know that you shouldn't give it a lot of your information, to know that you should ask if it's AI that you're speaking to, and it needs to tell you if it's AI that you're speaking to, and then follow that up with, what's your privacy policy? What are you using the information for? Where does it get recorded? Those types of things will absolutely help protect you against any nefarious uses of AI, even going on into the future, not just today. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and uh, even comment. Tell me about it. What are your experiences? Have you spoken to a Roger before? Um, what has your experience been with AI? Is it good or bad? Uh, are you using it regularly? Do you ask these questions? Do you follow these steps? I want to hear all your information. So I don't want to hear all your personal information, though. I just want to hear the stories about what's happened with AI in your life. And maybe we can all help each other to utilize AI more effectively and safely. Thanks for watching.